Hello Internet, Victor with Phone Arena here with a review of the Nokia XL. Now this is one of the most affordable phones that you can buy with a large display. Here we have a 5 inch screen and this runs on Android, that's right. You wouldn't expect this from Nokia as the company is releasing mostly phones with Windows Phone, but this is an Android based phone that runs on the Nokia X platform. Now Nokia basically did what Amazon does with Android, it took the base and it added its own customization so you won't even recognize it. This phone is running on Android. In fact, it looks much more like Windows Phone with its tile interface and so on. We'll take a closer look at those features later on. So what does it offer? It's got a big display, but it does not have access to the Google Play Store. So it runs Android, it's got a camera both on the back and the front. Let's see how it runs and what's it all about. You can tell just by its name that the Nokia XL is a large device. It's a 5 inch phone but it has huge bezels and it comes in a pretty thick and bulky package. Not only is it thick, it's also very heavy, more so than even most phablets. It's solidly put together though and does not squeak when you hold it tightly. The XL has a plastic wrap around shell with the back made of matte plastic that feels soft but also picks up fingerprints easily. The physical keys are on the right side, the lock key in the middle and the volume rocker above it and both are clicky and easy to press. The 5 inch display is not an XL sized screen by today's standards, but it's still big for such an affordable phone. It has a resolution of 480 by 800 pixels, meaning that it's not very sharp, something that you'd notice mostly when you look at text. If you don't obsess over pixels though, you'd see that it's among the best in terms of color reproduction. It's rich and vivid with deep blacks. It's great. Outdoors though, it's a bit too dim and reflective, so it's hard to see what's on it. Finally, while viewing angles are not terrible, they're not good either. The true standout feature of the Nokia XL, however, is the Android Nokia X 1.0 platform. The X platform is the first Nokia experiment with Android, and it's somewhat similar to the way Amazon uses the open parts of Android to create its Kindle Fire series. In other words, it's so heavily modified that you'd barely recognize you're indeed using Google's operating system. We called this platform Frankenstein of a software when we first saw it in the Nokia X and we can only confirm this observation with the XL. It's a phone with Android but also with a Windows Phone inspired tile based interface immersed in the Microsoft ecosystem. In fact, Nokia X is built from the ground up to be a window to the world of Microsoft services and a wall to the world of Google. None of Google's traditional apps are here, instead of Google Maps you get Nokia's map. Rather than having Gmail, you have a different client that feels more limited and the YouTube stock app is simply missing and finally the massive Google Play Store is replaced with the sketchy and spotty Nokia solution. Yes, you can sideload apps, but with no Google Play Store on board, the Nokia XL is crippled, lacking easy access to most popular apps like Spotify and Netflix. In terms of interface, you have tiles, but not the dynamic live tiles that, that give Windows Phone its character. These ones are static, with icons that are too simplistic and plain don't look good. In the end it all looks like a mashup of colors and pixelated icons drawn by a kid in MS Paint. The notification drop down is also not as rich as on Android with just 4 quick toggles and no options to customize its appearance. Swipe to the left of the home screen and you arrive in Nokia's fast lane, a view of all your recent apps and actions that replaces the traditional Android multitasking. It's also worth mentioning Nokia's in-house features that are kinda neat, the glance screen that allows you to see the clock and double tap to wake up the phone. In terms of performance and speed, the Nokia XL rarely lags and generally feels zippy nearly all throughout. It's powered by a fairly old chip though, a dual core 1GHz Snapdragon S4 Play with 768MB of RAM. Another downside of the Nokia XL is that it only comes with 4GB of internal storage, of which only around 1.2GB are available to the end user. Luckily, you can expand via microSD cards of up to 32GB. The dated processor seems to be a bottleneck when it comes to browsing, as pages load slower than we'd like and rendering different parts of them as well as just scrolling around is definitely on the slow side. The Nokia XL lacks 4G LTE connectivity, but that's expected for such an affordable phone. It has 3G, that is not too fast, as well as Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 3.0, GPS, but there is no NFC on board. The Nokia XL comes with a 5 megapixel autofocus main camera, plus it also packs a basic front shooter. 
The quality of the captured photographs is good, but not spectacular. Images have nice and vivid colors in most conditions, and this makes them perfectly fit for social sharing. There are, however, two notable issues with the camera. First one is that it is very slow, and the second one is the weird and natural over-sharpening visible in almost all images. This sharpening effect is so aggressive that you can even see some white halo-like artifacts in images. Indoors, images turn out okay. Dynamics could have been a little bit better, but overall you're getting a usable picture with fairly pleasing colors. Our studio shots, however, show that the handset sometimes has trouble with color. It swings towards greenish colors that probably only Kermit the Frog would like. Having a front cam in an affordable phone is still considered an advantage, and Nokia's front shooter captures decent photos in good light. The main camera is also capable of recording up to 480p video at 30 frames per second, that does not look good at all. Its biggest problem is the sore lack of detail and the loose autofocus. Sound recording quality is also not something to brag about in the Nokia XL. It lacks clarity, picks up lots of side noise and it's hard to make out voices in the recordings. The vivid 5-inch display makes video watching a great experience and with mixed radio on board you have music streaming covered as well. Speaking of music, we should once again mention the sore lack of many popular streaming services like Spotify and Pandora in the Nokia app catalog. You'd need to sideload those apps if you're using them. Sound via the loudspeaker is very loud and fairly clear. Great. Call quality is a bit of a mixed bag on the Nokia XL. On one hand voices in the earpiece sound very clear and natural, while on the other end of the line sound is muffled and not all that clear, plus it is also on the quiet side. The phone comes with a 2000mAh battery with an above average battery life. In real life use you can expect it to last a bit more than a full day, not bad at all. You can also easily remove the wrap around back cover and change the battery, which is nice. Now, in conclusion, we ought to say that the Nokia XL has a good value for the money and it's got one of the best displays in terms of color reproduction in this affordable phone class. Its biggest drawback? The apps. There are simply none of the great apps that you're used to seeing on the Google Play Store as there is no Google Play Store and that's the biggest problem. I have a very limited selection of apps in the Nokia custom made store for this phone. Now it's also a bit big and a bit unwieldy to handle so you might want to take this into account with, with prior, than, uh, prior to buying this phone. It's also got dual SIM connectivity, now that's a plus. And it's got a fairly uh, well performing processor. It's a very old processor but it, it runs actually fairly well on this device. So all in all, if you're looking for an affordable phone, this is not a bad option. If you're looking for an alternative, the Motorola Moto G cost, costs a little bit more, but it's got full access to that Google Play Store. It's got a 4.5 inch display that looks great and it's also pretty zippy. And if you're looking for another alternative, you might want to try something like the Nokia Lumia 520 or 525, which both run on Windows Phone. That also feels a bit smoother and prettier and those phones are also fairly cheap. For a more detailed review of the Nokia XL, make sure to go to phonearena.com. Thanks for watching.